Hello everyone. So today I'll tell you about ANR. Uh, why we need ANR in LD. <clears throat> so actually there are two ways to add neighbors in an LD network. I think everyone is aware why we need neighbors. Means uh, neighbors are required for cell reselection and handovers. Okay, so the two ways are one is you can configure the neighbors manually, and another way you can use ANR. ANR stands for automatic neighbor relation. Okay, so in this procedure, neighbors added automatically as per the requirement on the basis of measurement reports shared by UE to serving E node B. I'll show you this in detail as well. Okay, and nowadays uh, ANR is used means uh, operators prefer ANR more because it makes your network more smarter. So this is the figure that I have uh, made for this ANR lecture. So here you can see this is the E node B having PCI zero and ECGI one. This is serving E node B. A UE is attached to this serving E node B. So means it is sending measurement reports on periodic basis to this E node B. Okay, so uh, why it is sending measurement reports? Because we know that uh, while attaching to this E node B first time, uh, it configures your UE in reconfiguration message that you have to send measurement reports periodically. So it sends measurement reports periodically to this serving E node B. So let's start how means uh, how this serving uh, E node B will add this neighbor E node B. Uh, using ANR. So suppose this UE is uh, moving towards this neighbor, neighbor cell. This neighbor cell is having PCI 27 and ECJ 46. Okay. So uh, as it is moving uh, closer to this E node B, that is neighbor cell, the signal strength of this E node B will be means uh, more strong. So you can say the step number one that major sing major signal of PCI 27. So step number one saying UE detects a strong signal coming from neighbor cell having PCI 27 because UE is moving towards this PCI 27. Now step number two. This uh, step number two UE is sending measurement report to serving cell and here. You will say to serving in would be uh, that I am receiving good RSRP or signal strength from this neighbor cell. So step number two, UE sends measurement report to serving cell saying that I am getting good RSRP from PCA 27. Now come to step number three. Now uh, the serving in would be sends RRC connection reconversion message to UE. Uh, where it will ask UE to share the ECJ of neighboring cell. Why ECJ? Because uh, PCIs are limited in LT network. They are varying from they varies from zero to five zero three. Means there are total five zero four PCIs available in LT network. So it's quite possible that two E node Bs have same PCI, but ECJ could never be same for two E node Bs. So that is why the serving E node B is asking for is asking to share ECJ of neighbor cell. So let's read step number three again. Source E node B sends RRC connection reconversion message to UE. Here source E node B asks to share ECJ of neighbor cell. DRX is also configured. I'll tell you why. And if it is a inter-frequency neighbor, then source E node B will configure measurement gap in same message. DRX is configured because uh, when UE will in sleep mode, it will go, uh, it will go and read the sib one of uh, neighbor cell. That is why DRX is required. And if it is a interfrequency uh, interfrequency measurement, means if both two E node Bs have different frequencies, then the measurement gap is configured in place of uh, DRX. 
the more detail i'll share uh, in some another lecture about drx and measurement gap how they works for now you can uh, means just uh, know that drx is required if uh, ue wants to measure some another e node b uh, signal or you can uh, no not signal exactly if ue wants to uh, read the sib message of neighbor e node b so drx is configured uh, so after this in step number 4 ue will read the sib1 message of this target e node b you can say here it is mentioned step number 4 uh why is sib1 message because e node b's uh, always broadcast its ecgi in sib1 message so let's read sib number 4 4 ue reads sib1 of neighbor cell where neighbor cell is broadcasting its ecgi so now ecgi uh, now ue knows the ecgi of neighbor cell now in step number 5 uh, ue is sending ecgi to uh or serving cell step number 5 is a measurement report in which uh, ue is sending ecgi ecgi of neighboring cell that is ecgi 46 uh, and it is reporting it to serving cell okay so step number 5 ue will send measurement report to source e node b but this time ue will report ecgi to neighbor cell ecgi of neighbor cell okay so come to step number 6 uh, okay here so now uh, serving e node b gets what it wants so it will add the neighbor cell in its nrt nrt stands for neighbor relation table means it will update its uh, table with this uh, neighbor cell okay in let's read step number 6 source e node b will add neighbor e node b in its nrt correct so now come to step number 7 updated neighboring cell list uh here serving e node b informs om the om center that is operation and maintenance center that i have updated my nrt table uh, with this e node b and now step number 8 source e node b will sends x2 set up request message to neighbor e node b to establish x2 interface in response neighbor e node b will send x2 set up complete message to serving cell so once this uh, procedure is completed the x2 interface is established between these two e node b's so it will means uh, we know the importance of x2 interface it is means helpful in x2 handovers in and some other uh, activities as well so i hope you like this video and in another lecture i'll show you the qxdm logs that is the ue logs also uh, where the this nr procedure is uh, happened in uh, in you can say in field network so thank you